Yo, central bank digital currencies or CBDCs, in my opinion, are going to have a large impact on the crypto industry for the second half of this year, 2021. And I also predict that a lot of major central banks are actually going to consult crypto startups, crypto projects that we usually know from their ticker names on CoinGecko or CoinMarketCap, because the big challenge for central banks is right now to figure out how to build the technological base layer. So in today's video, I want to focus on one specific country, and that is Korea, one of the most innovative and rapidly growing internet economies in the whole world, very advanced, very technology focused. And Korea seems to be very well aware that the race for new digital currency and a new digital monetary system is ongoing right now. China is way ahead of the curve. They have already launched their CBDC last year in April. So now Korea wants to be the next major economy that is launching their CBDC. And if you want to learn about three crypto projects that are actually candidates to partner up with the Bank of Korea to build such a platform, then make sure that you stick around to the very end of this video. And on top of that, please help me to achieve my goal of 10,000 subscribers. All you got to do is to click to subscribe to my YouTube channel, to share this video maybe with one or two friends if you like it, tell them to subscribe to my channel as well, like it, comment it as well to train the algorithm, show the algorithm that those topics are relevant now more than ever. And also please make sure that you watch this entire thing. First thing first, let me talk a little bit about what CBDCs actually are, why they matter, and why it's going to be so crucial for the next few years for central banks to actually be on top of the game there. The whole concept of CBDCs was actually inspired by Bitcoin. It was actually inspired by cryptocurrencies and the emergence of DLTs, decentralized ledger technologies. So the Bank of International Settlements, which is the central bank of central banks, they actually published surveys now over the past one, two years, where they're asking around the world um, other central banks, like, guys, do you, do you plan to launch your own CBDC? Are you working on that? And if so, what design should it have, right? And most of the central banks over the years, more and more and more, I think 86% or something, actually say that they're actively working or exploring CBDCs and not just um, trying to rebuild a whole new currency, but actually to also replace commercial banks. Because now the central bank actually becomes the direct peer that will be connected to the people, to the population, right? And one of the first CBDCs that we are seeing already that is currently live, that is fully live, is the Bahamian cent dollar, right? On the Bahamas, sometime late last year, I think October 2020, they launched a fully functional CBDC, which is basically an app that you download from the App Store, from the central bank, from the Bahamian central bank, and it is basically a new form of money, right? And if you have ever been to China, um, you know that they are only using their phones to conduct payments, right? Or to even transfer money. So they're only, only using their mobile wallets and they um, use Alipay or WeChat Pay. They have both, I think, around a billion users. And um, that's how they live their daily lives, right? They don't use cash anymore. They don't use online banking, banking transfers. They only use their mobile wallets. That's basically their daily lives. And everywhere are QR codes and you pay like that. Now, the difference is that Alipay and WeChat Pay are private companies, right? Obviously, they are overseen by the Chinese government and um, all those kinds of things. But the Bahamian cent dollar, on the other hand, is uh, accessible through an application from the central bank, right? So you're basically replacing private the private sector with the central bank, with the public sector, right? And the bottom line is that, well, this actually gives much more control to the central banks, right? Not only can they program all the features and the monetary policy into the code of their digital currency, but also they now have direct access and communication to the end user, right? To, to retail, to everyone on the street. They can offer financial products. They can often offer financial services. And they also have the financial resources and capabilities and power to actually um, incentivize people, people to use that, right? And on top of that, another main differentiator between CBDCs and cryptocurrencies, for example, um, that come from the private sector, right? DLTs, um, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and all those kinds of cryptos is that a central bank is going to launch their CBDC and they're going to declare it as a legal tender, right? 
I'm not aware of any major economic region that has declared Bitcoin as legal tender. In fact, we're rather seeing the opposite, right? Um, the Turkish government and Turkish central bank actually just came out a few weeks ago and prohibited people from accept accepting Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies in trade, right? So merchants cannot accept cryptos anymore. But before I get stuck too much talking about general stuff around CBDCs, let's get down to the Korean central bank and their um, pilot project that is coming up in August and three potential candidates that you most likely know from CoinMarketCap and CoinGecko um, that are involved in that process. All right, first of all, big shout out to Do Wan Nam. Please follow him on Twitter. Um, he's based in Korea. He's also working for um, with MakerDAO, um, but he's really, really deep in the Korean blockchain and crypto ecosystem. And he's sharing a lot of valuable content on what is going on on ground there, right? What is going on with regulation, what is going on with project adoption, but also partnerships in the space. So he put out that tweet yesterday saying that many, including Kakao's Ground X, aka Clayton, are competing for securing a deal for CBDC. Um, interesting, Hana Bank, which is, I think, the second largest bank in Korea, is applying for a CBDC using Cosmos. And you guys know that I'm really, really a big fan of Cosmos, right? And he also tagged this article here from Coindesk Korea, which is from the 14th of April, 2021. And it basically talks about the um, links between the Bank of Korea, the HANA Bank, and also Postech, which is a university in Korea, and Cosmos. And this illustration here is actually from the HANA Bank. And they are now going to propose to the Bank of Korea, to the Central Bank of Korea, um, a platform on which they could launch a CBDC on top of, right? So this is just um, a visualization how that could look like, right? On a um, on a from, from an end user perspective, and that's uh, again this app that you know people can just download and you can send receive money. It's basically like a crypto wallet. Now that article also further talks about how um, the Hana Bank announced its partnership with Pastech, um, more precisely with the Crypto Blockchain Research Center at the Pohang University of Science and Technology, right? And that's one of the bigger, most respected universities in, in Korea, apparently. And you can already see that here. Well, I obviously use Google Translate. I don't speak Korean. That they have chosen Cosmos. And they have chosen Cosmos for the reasons of interoperability and also speed, right? So they even call it inter-blockchain. I think that is also one of the main things that central banks are looking on, right? Because they need to also have compatibility with other chains and also the whole blockchain and crypto economy. So this is very interesting. Unfortunately, we only have this article here um, regarding the Cosmos partnership and Cosmos announcement. Um, you can also check out here if you want to learn about Postec, this university. Um, you can learn about what they do, um, their research fields, right? They're in a lot of different things, not just um, technology but a lot of other fields as well. So this is the bottom line here. This is all that we have for now that um, Pastec, which is a university in Korea, they have chosen Cosmos as the technology stack because it's fast, because it's interoperable. Um, and they partnered with um, HANA Bank, which is the second largest commercial bank in Korea. And HANA Bank is now actively pursuing to propose a CBDC platform for the Bank of Korea, right? And I think the Bank of Korea said that they are still um, they're still want, you know, they, they have this open bidding process basically where they want more projects to propose them um, solutions, right? And I think by August, they want to have that uh, in the books. So they are going to launch a pilot in August this year, right? Which is just a few months away. And then yesterday, um, another article came out by Join D, which is a Korean, I guess, research institute or media platform. And they have um, shared this article here which is only available in Korea. But I found a very similar version of that article here on Binance Wiki. Actually, um, they mentioned Navera, which is um, uh, Korea's biggest search engine and also um, created by the founder of Line, uh, which is a chat app that is dominant in Japan and also, I think, um, Taiwan. So Navera, then you have Kakao, and um, Kakao Talk, I've talked about this extensively here on my channel as well. I just made an in-depth deep dive on Kakao Talk and also Clayton because Kakao is the largest social media app in Korea. It's basically the WhatsApp of Korea. And they have launched a subsidiary that is called GroundX um, that is operating and building the Clayton blockchain, right? So they have launched it already. It's in full swing. They have a whole DeFi ecosystem. Please check out my, my, my deep dive on that as well. 
LG, which we know, if you watch my channel, you know that LG is a governing council member of Hedera Hashgraph. So we have these three contenders, plus what I talked just now um, a minute ago, right? We have the HANA Bank and um, uh, POSTEC with Cosmos. They will bid to participate in South Korean CBDC pilot, right? So this is really interesting. And we're just going to go through that article because that one sums it up really, really nicely. So the Bank of Korea is set to pilot its prototype Digital Korean One beginning in August as the country increases the pace of its CBDC um, adoption plans. It looks as though three of the na nation's biggest tech giants are keen to take part. So like I already mentioned, Kakao, they have a lot of subsidiaries and a lot of different arms in their, in their company. Um, an organization, KakaoPay is one of them, GroundX is another one of them, and they're building Clayton, right? So Clayton is already trading um, on rank 25 or 30 or something like that on CoinGecko, pretty well established. Then the next candidate here is the Shinhan Bank in collaboration with LG, right? And LG, we don't need to talk about this, one of the largest tech companies in Korea. The Shinhan Bank is actually the largest uh, bank in Korea. And actually, interestingly enough, both of them are governing council members on Hedera Hashgraph. LG is already in it since a while. The Shinhan Bank just joined recently. And um, it's a great coincidence and timing that you know they're partnering, they're both working together, and they're both council members on Hedera Hashgraph. And uh, they have also shown um, interest to build on that platform. So we are going to see what comes out of that. So this might be super interesting. Another bidder could be the HANA Bank, which we just covered and that um, is in collaboration with the Central for Cryptocurrency Blockchain Research and the POSCO or POSTEC University in Pohang. So we have Cosmos in the race, we have Hedera in the race, and we have Clayton in the race. So we have those three contenders right now in the race that are not just um, building te technology, but also actually have high level partnerships and collaborations with tech giants such as LG, also financial institutions like the Shinhan Bank, the HANA Bank, but also academic institutions like Pastec, right? I love to see that. I love diversification. And just on a side note, guys, I'm also holding all those three coins, right? I've talked about HBAR a lot. I hold a lot of HBAR. I hold a lot of Atom as well. I'm also running a validator node. So I'm a, I love Atom and Cosmos and the Cosmos ecosystem. And also I talked about Clayton. I'm also holding Clayton now since, since almost a year. Now to sum everything up, we have one of the largest and most important economies in the world, technology economies in the world. That is also, by the way, one of the largest and most important crypto markets worldwide. Uh, if you've been here in 2017, you know that Korea played a major role there. And it's very interesting to see that they are now also doing their homework on other crypto projects um, on a higher level, right? On a government level. And what would be the bottom line for that? The bottom line for that would, well, it would not mean that Atom would be, you know, used by the Korean officials and Korean government and everywhere in every merchant transaction. It would rather mean that they're just using their technology stack, right? To which degree we have no idea yet. We have no clue how that's going to be looking like, but obviously they will seek to maintain their control and maintain their position as they have it right now um, as a central bank. However, I think one of the key things here and that what I've also learned researching about those things is that central banks actually care a lot about interoperability. And they see that you can't censor, you can't block, you can't stop the emergence of crypto, of DLTs, of blockchain, right? You can't stop it. What you can do though, you can adapt it and you can, um, you can become part of it, right? And Korea apparently um, aims to become part of it. That's why they're also considering Cosmos, right? That's why the Pastec University is also considering to use Cosmos and propose Cosmos to the Bank of Korea because it's interoperable. It's one of the most, actually the most advanced interoperability protocols out there with IBC implementations. And then Gravity Dex is just around the corner, which would also mean that you could potentially list um, the Korean digital currency on Gravity Dex, right? It's an open banking, open finance system. You can do a lot of cool things with it. So a lot of things to think about. It's way too early to decide on a winner here, right? I see on Twitter, a lot of people are saying like, oh no, only Hedera is gonna be chosen. Oh no, only Cosmos. Oh no, only this, only that. Guys, it's way too early. They haven't even finished the bidding process yet. Maybe we're gonna see another project as well joining the space. The more the merrier, I like that. Um, um, but it's also great as an investor in those coins to see that they are actually, you know, being noticed, being noticed on a very high level. And of course, if their technology gets used on such a scale, on such a large high level, it would 
bring, in my opinion, it would bring a lot of depth for the project, right? It would bring a lot of stability or a lot of robustness or a lot of also credibility, right? And that's what we need. I'm looking forward for that. Um, if I've missed anything or if you want to share anything in, in uh, accordance to that, please leave a comment under this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're safe. I'll see you guys on the next one. Stay safe and be good.